I'm going to go back to the new shack. Okay, now we're in the uh, kind of like the bat cave here. Yeah, this is the uh, the new workshop that I built. Uh, this is like the third version of this thing, uh, all computer designed and whatnot, but that's for another video. Uh, you know, some of you guys uh, have seen my videos, uh, you know, have uh, are, are familiar with uh, this place basically. So, anyway, uh, this video is all about battery packs. So you want to back up emergency battery pack and uh, you know you want something high capacity you want to use something like this anyway uh, this is a Minn Kota battery box you can find these at a lot of marine stores uh, all across the country uh, wherever and uh, they're meant for running a trolling motor uh, they attach the trolling motor to these posts right on the outside here and you typically run a really big battery inside these things so uh, a couple cool things about this it's got a very simple battery gauge uh, it's got a couple circuit breakers on here. It's got a 10 amp one for these cigarette lighters. Cigarette lighter plugs on the outside here. Both sides. And then it's got a 60 amp breaker for these terminals right here. So you can run some larger stuff off of these and uh, not have to worry. And it's push button resettable. Just push those if you ever trip it. So uh, let's get into this uh, really quick here. So what do you do with a big box like this uh, with a giant battery inside it? Well, it just becomes a really long runtime backup pack so that you can run all kinds of things off of it in an emergency. You can charge cell phones, you know, with an adapter off of this. Uh, you can charge power tools like this. Milwaukee and DeWalt both make uh, chargers that are uh, 12 volt capable for their uh, systems. And uh, you can do things like this. You can run an inverter. I mean, this is just a small one with uh, like uh, screw terminals on the back side there. Uh, they've got much larger ones. Uh, I mean, you can run, uh, you know, probably one of those small thousand watt ones off of this, possibly by uh, attaching big cables right onto here. Uh, I don't normally do that, but you know, some people may want to. Uh, you can also run uh, special battery chargers like this for flashlights and things. And this is one of the key things uh, in an emergency. I mean, you always need communications and, you know, you need lights. So these chargers right here, uh, these are one of the best ones that I've found out of all of them. Uh, it's made by Nightcore and you can charge, as you see, it's compatible with lithium ion, you know, lithium polymer, uh, NICAD and uh, nickel metal hydride. So anyway, you can charge all the different sizes of these batteries. You can charge 18650s, you can charge uh, some of the small CR123 rechargeables, like in this Surefire light here uh, that I've got. And uh, you know, it's a full smart charger. And the cool thing is, you can plug in a regular cord on the back side here to uh, run off a you know normal power outlet, or you can use a normal barrel plug on this. So you get an adapter that goes from cigarette lighter to barrel plug. You know, put that in there, put that in there. You're charging flashlights for a long, long time. So now I'm going to talk about what kind of batteries go into this pack. Now, uh, if you look at a lot of these boxes, uh, this one's an older one. So on the back side, it says fits group 24 and 27 battery sizes. Now, a lot of the newer ones actually say fits group 24 through 31. Now, I don't have any uh, 24s here, but the only difference is the, the width of the battery, basically. So you can see this is just a uh, cheapy Walmart group 29 right here. And, you know, it's a specific length. Uh, a 24 is pretty short. There's a 27. You've got your 29. And then you've got your 31 back here. And if you'll notice, they're both exactly the same size. So I don't know if that's true for all of these. It should be, but, um, you know, it's kind of a little oddball. So whatever. Um, now, the thing about the battery box is when you're charging these batteries back up inside here, especially in a house or something like that, you don't really want any of these older batteries. These batteries are pretty cheap. You know, this is like a regular... Uh, 
you know, Group 29 deep cycle marine battery. And uh, marine batteries have extra terminals on top, which is important for later. They've got dual terminals, smaller ones on there. Um, and uh, most of these cheaper ones are flooded batteries. So, you know, you've got all the warnings on here, you know, uh, warning, shield your eyes, explosive gases, sulfuric acid inside can cause burns, you know, and all that, because there's water inside this. And uh, in certain charging situations, uh, gases can be emitted from here and water can come out. So, uh, you know, these are kind of unsuitable at this point for going into battery packs like this that you may want to leave in a house or, you know, in a room or something uh, close by to you. Uh, you know, you don't want to have this thing like venting hydrogen gases in there while it's charging. So there's a, you know, we move on to this type of battery. Now, these batteries right here are called AGM and it stands for absorbed glass mat. And on the inside, uh, it's not really like a gel, I guess, but uh, there, there's no liquid in here. Uh, all the uh, material is embedded into the plates. It's either wrapped in there or something. You, you've seen like Optima batteries possibly in... Uh, auto uh, stores and they have round cells and they've got some kind of spiral wrapped you know uh, fiberglass stuff in there or whatever uh, where the uh, you know all the electrolyte and everything's embedded in it somehow so uh, you know this is a little bit different this is just a square version of one of those now the nice thing about these particular batteries right here these are made by DECA in the United States and you can now order these through Sam's Club in the United States and get them delivered to your local store and the important thing is um, you know normally shipping I, I live in kind of a remote area so uh, shipping is very expensive on these these are very heavy items and uh, it's nice to be able to just pick this up in a local store and a lot of the local stores also they don't sell group 31s no one ever sells the batteries this big they usually have the group 27s they're they're kind of common but uh, you know, in AGM like this, you can't get a nice full size one. So now you finally can. It just has the Duracell brand name on it, but it's made by East Penn Manufacturing in Pennsylvania. So this is pretty much like, uh, I think DECA sells these as a uh, DECA Intimidator, and you can order them from certain places like Remy Battery in Milwaukee and things, and, and you can mail order them if you have to. So like I said, overall, this is just really nice being able to pick these up locally. And uh, the other thing, too, is, you know, they're uh, fully sealed. Uh, they claim, you know, some fumes could come out of this at some time. I highly doubt it. I really don't think this is going to off-gas any kind of fumes uh, constantly or anything. I mean, it's, it is fully sealed with just some little emergency-looking vents on there or something. Um, so, you know, that's a nice thing. Also, it has kind of a convenient small handle that just folds down, so you don't have that big strap that goes over the top and uh it's it's definitely strong enough to carry this thing so uh what we've got to do is we've got to get this thing into this box so i'm going to show you how really quick okay so let's do this so you've got a strap around here with a buckle just take that off and you open up the box basically you've just got the lower part and you've got the upper part with uh, the little electronics in it and your positive and negative cables. So we set that off to the side. Okay, now we get this into here. And these are sort of insanely heavy. And you notice here, they take up almost the whole box. And it shifts around in here a little bit. You don't really have to worry too much uh, about that. Um, I've never had it like slop around in here too much while carrying it. You know, if you wanted to, you could probably put like a little uh, piece of foam spacer down in there if you really wanted to make this, uh, you know, kind of shockproof or whatever. But we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so next step, we want to get this on here. Now... You know, we've got our positive and negative. And these leads inside here are heavy duty. They're designed to go on the smaller post. Now, there's little covers here, plastic covers. If you're not using both posts, you can split this 
cover and take this off to make things a little safer. So you've got plastic safety covers over the positive and negative. So, uh, you know, something can't touch those accidentally. So I'm going to go ahead and snap that off. So just snap these off and put those back on there. So now we're getting ready to hook this up. You want to be a little careful while uh, hooking this up because you can get some sparks while doing this. And, uh, You can either use the uh, nuts that come with the battery, or uh, I've gone out and I picked up some stainless steel wing nuts that fit these terminals. I forget the size offhand. I think it's 5 16 by uh, 18 coarse thread. Um, not exactly sure. You know, don't quote me on that. And, um, you know, if you're using uh, the uh, nuts that come with it, you need a half inch wrench. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the wing nuts. Okay, so, you know, make sure these are angled in a little bit. And just seriously tighten these down. Okay, and there we are, and we can close this thing up. Now, in another video, I'm going to show a few more things about this. You can get these... Uh, fuse holders, inline fuse holders with little harnesses. And uh, like this one has uh, custom Anderson connectors on the end of it. Now, if I wanted to, I can put this also in here off the same terminals, but it's a little clumsy to route these uh, sometimes. You can hook uh, auxiliary power uh, cables like this to come out the sides over here uh, where there's little uh, cable exits and stuff like that on these batteries now in this case putting this on will turn this into an anderson positive and negative quick connector now you can see here i've got a uh, a barrel connector to anderson and these only go on one way they just click on they're pretty durable they don't really want to come apart easily and then this allows me to use my battery charger over here with a more positive connection than a uh, cigarette lighter set up. Once the top is tightened on, you've got a nice handle on top you can carry this by, but you really don't want to carry this with one hand if you can help it. It's got a, you know, grab handles on both sides. So you'll notice this is a quite a, quite a weighty beast. But uh, this thing, the battery that's inside here is 105 amp hours. And basically that is a lot of juice. You'll be able to charge all kinds of things like this for quite some time off it. Now, running inverters and things off this, uh, the inverters, they'll they'll kill these packs pretty quickly. So that's why in emergencies, I like to just do like things like cell phones, uh, you know, flashlights like this, tablet computers, maybe if you got to turn a laptop on or something like that, you know, just real, real simple uses. And uh, you get a lot of life out of them. Now we go on to how you charge this thing. So, uh, this is one of the best chargers that I've found for doing this kind of stuff uh, because it's a really modern charger and uh, it's made by SeaTech. They have a couple different models. Uh, you know, this one I've got the little optional, uh, you know, rubber uh, crash, uh, crash cover on it here. And uh, this one's an orange one, but they come in silver too. This one's called the Polar model. So it's got uh, supposedly more flexible cables going into it, stuff like that. And, you know, that's fine. So you're going to need to get yourself a uh, kind of a, a small, simple, fully automatic battery charger like this. This one is four amps. So it'll take quite a while to charge this thing up. But you can also leave it connected. It's very safe. There's almost nothing to do on this. There's a button on the top that tells you what mode to go in. And really all you do is set it for automotive on here. 
And um, you can also, it depends on the battery, like it, it shows like a picture of like an Optima on here or something. Uh, you can put it on the Optima setting. I mean, either one will work for the for uh, AGM batteries like the one we put in here, the fully sealed. So once you do that, you just follow the instructions in the manual and you just let it go up to uh, it, the number seven on here. And then um, uh, you'll see it shows like a little icon of a battery on here. So that means it's fully charged and it'll light up green. So you just basically, you know, connect it and forget it. Now, to charge the battery, there's a couple different ways you can do it. A lot of battery chargers, they've got these uh, old school uh, clamps on here. Now, this pack can be charged that way. You take these thumb screw covers off. And you've got a set of brass terminals here. So you just go ahead and connect your battery charger this way. And, uh, you know, do that. If, if you have just a simple charger and uh, this is all you want to use, you know, go ahead and do it that way. Now, there's another option for the SeaTac. You see it's got a quick disconnect here. And there's other chargers that are similar to this too. You can take that off. And the charger comes with this little uh, pigtail connector here. So you've got a, a fuse protected positive and negative over here. You can put this inside the cover and attach it to the battery terminals and have it come out the side. So you'll have a charging plug just dangling out here and you can quick connect up to it like that coming out of the side of the box. Uh, that's kind of cool, and I would definitely do that if you uh, have the time to, uh, you know, go ahead and attach this on there, because then you leave these cigarette lighter uh, sockets free. Now, for eleven dollars, you can get this, and this is a cigarette lighter plug for this, and I would really recommend buying this uh, for a couple reasons. So that clips on there, and you want to charge your pack. Just charge it right there through the cigarette lighter port. And it's perfectly safe to do so. Now, the CTEX are pretty good, but if you notice, the, uh, the, the plugs here never quite fit in these cigarette lighter things. So somebody could walk by, accidentally trip on this, pull it out really easily. Uh, you know, maybe if you forget and you don't quite push it in all the way, you know, there's, you know, there's a little bit of failure there that could happen. You know, you wouldn't be able to get a full charge on the pack if it's not plugged in all the way. You know, you may not notice. You'll just plug it in and run and, and you know, and uh, something will go on like that. But it's good to have this thing because in an emergency also, uh, you can use this to charge up somebody's car. And you don't have to go under the hood. You can just go into the cigarette lighter in the car, plug this in, and charge your car with this. I mean, it takes quite a while, but you might be able to uh, you know, get away with not needing a jump start if you leave this plugged in for an hour or two. And it might just give you enough power to start your car. So it's a very, very good idea to have this uh, optional plug on there. Um, but really what you want to do is you do want to install this one to the terminals inside the box on top of the battery, just right along with the other ones we attached in the other step and have this hanging out the side. Out, out the back here. So let's give this thing a charge. I'm going to put on the cigarette lighter plug. Stick that in there. Uh, also, we can test this by pushing the test button. And it's real faint. But you can see it's lighting up. It's saying it's full. But, you know, take your charger. Plug it in the wall. You see it's on the uh, automotive setting right here. And this charger is fully automatic. It's just going to charge this thing until it's done. Until you see the green light come on uh, on number seven here. So that's all there is to it. And it's going to take, you know, multiple hours. It can even take overnight to get this pack charged up. And what 
what you can do is you can leave this charger plugged in, have this thing sitting on a bench somewhere or whatnot, or you know, even in a room of a house, especially if you've got the nice, uh, more secure cord on here. Uh, you know, put it up so you know people don't get into it, dogs don't you know chew on the cords, whatever you know, whatever you got. Um, but the charger can stay indefinitely connected to this thing without overcharging the battery. So the pack will always be ready to go. The minute the power goes out, you're still running over here. You're fully charged on your battery. So you can go ahead and use your phone, flashlight, whatever you gotta do. Explanation of how to charge a battery pack um, and get your backup battery pack up and going and put together. Now in the future, I'm gonna do some other videos talking a little bit more in depth about how to plug in these particular items into the pack and also how to do things like uh, use like say a simple solar panel and hook a plug up on the side of the pack so you can have solar going into this and uh, charge it off solar. You also need a solar charge controller which you know I'll talk about in other videos and on my channel there's some other uh, uh, pictures of solar panels with charge controllers but there's some uh, neat new ones that have come out that uh, are nice and small and uh, you know pretty interesting to go in here so you know at your house you could have a uh, simple panel like this kind of like the ones you can get at Harbor Freight or something like that and you could have these mounted outside have a cord coming in to a charge controller which is then plugged into your pack and some of the charge controllers are really nice they have a little display on them that'll tell you how you know uh, the status of the battery and all that and will tell you how much solar is actually coming in so you know your your uh, pack is being charged and um, you know uh, that's a, a pretty nice thing to have I hope that was uh, you know pretty self-explanatory I'll see you in the next video uh, you'll be uh, really ready for any uh, kind of future power outages or anything bad that's gonna come your way